the last speaker of this session is Dr. Song Li from UCLA. Thank you, Howard. And first, I want to thank our uh, organizers, uh, uh, Jay, Joe, and uh, GQ, for organizing such a wonderful symposium. So today, I want to uh, tell you some of the uh, recent work on how stem cells participate in vascular remodeling. So the research in our lab is focused on uh, cell and tissue engineering. On the one hand, we are interested in understanding how bi uh, microenvironmental factors, especially biophysical factors, mechanical and, and nano uh, microstructural materials can regulate uh, the epigenetic state of the, the cells, chromatin organization, and then the uh, stem cell differentiation, cell reprogramming into iPS cells, or the direct conversion of fibroblasts into cardiomyocytes and neurons. So those are mostly in vitro work. On the other hand, we are interested in um, understanding how stem cells, either transplanted stem cells or the endogenous stem cells in the, in the tissue could uh, uh, participate in tissue remodeling and tissue regeneration. So today I want to uh, focus on our study, uh, mostly kind of related to the in vivo work in how stem cells are involved in uh, uh, vascular remodeling. So it tells three uh, short stories. And first is related, related to the development of vascular disease in atherosclerosis as uh, just uh, introduced by uh, uh, Wood. So traditionally, people have uh, uh, thought that uh, uh, mature smooth muscle cells can be differentiated into proliferative and, uh, uh, and synthetic smooth muscle cells and contribute to the uh, development of atherosclerosis. And yesterday, actually, Yami also showed some very convincing evidence by using the calcification model in blood vessel. If we ask the question, whether really the, uh, all smooth muscle cells can contribute to this process. And we know smooth muscle cells in the blood vessels are heterogeneous. And for example, is that possible only the immature smooth muscle cells could contribute to uh, this synthetic or proliferative smooth muscle cell population? On the other hand, is that possible that the stem cells in the blood vessel wall, even though it's a small population, they can proliferate uh, in response to inflammatory signal and also contribute significantly to these synthetic and, and proliferative proliferated smooth muscle cells. Actually, these cells are very similar to myofibroblasts. Could be uh, differentiated from those uh, vascular stem cells or mesenchymal stem cells. And we perform some single cell analysis in vitro. In this case, we take the uh, lineage tracing model uh, with myosin heavy chain as a uh, uh, marker to uh, isolate the smooth muscle cells from transgenic mice. We digest the uh, vessel, and then we use uh, optoelectronic uh, tweezers to uh, select the positive cells, and these cells are supposed to be myosin heavy chains. And then we see it on the surface. In this case, uh, the, self, uh, the surface is micro pattern with a lot of matrix islands. Each island is about 500 micron. In between, the area is not cell adhesive. And then we uh, did a single cell analysis to look at the uh, cell proliferation, cell differentiation, and uh, also we perform additional anal analysis for uh, in, uh, single cell contraction or single cell western uh, blotting uh, uh. So in this case, uh, I just want to show you one piece of data. Uh, what we found is all of these smooth muscle cells are uh, quite heterogeneous. If you play the cells in this uh, uh, individual adhesive <coughs> island, what we found is only a, a subpopulation of cells can proliferate. Most of smooth muscle cells, if they are mature and positive for myosin heavy chain, they do not grow. And if you perform differentiation analysis, only these proliferative cells can differentiate into, for example, osteogenic cells. In those non-proliferative cells, never being able to differentiate into any cell types. And uh, however, all of these smooth muscle cells we have tested so far, none of them could differentiate into adipogenic cells. If you compare the proliferation of the cells with those uh, 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 smooth muscle myosin negative cells, which is non-smooth muscle cells from the uh, median layer in the vessel wall, and some of them are stem cells, and some could be uh, fibroblasts, and what we found is Actually, uh, the proliferation of these um, smooth muscle cells is much slower compared to those uh, negative cells, suggesting that the uh, other cells could also uh, uh, dominate the, the uh, cell population in the uh, diseased vessel. So we did some study, actually, uh, thanks uh, for uh, Yabin's uh, help, and we got this uh, lineage tracing uh, myosin heavy chain mice, and we performed this uh, new intima uh, formation study by uh, inducing the injury in the artery. And interestingly, we found that two types of neo intimas. 
in, in one case, of course, as many people observe, that myosin heavy chain positive cells, in this case smooth muscle cells labeled by RP, they can uh, contribute to the majority of this new intima in the, in the lumen. However, if you uh, look into some other uh, uh, mice, at least 50 percent of these mice, uh, in this case, if you see here, there's myosin heavy chain positive cells, but in the new intima, almost uh, 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 no cells or positive or smooth muscle cells, suggesting there are uh, some uh, new intima which actually are, could be resulted from the known smooth muscle cells. In several years, years ago, we identified a type of vascular stem cells positive for the neurocrest stem cell marker, uh, SARS-10. And here is the working model we have. I just want to summarize the results uh, uh, in, in our hypothesis. Of course, uh, a subpopulation of smooth muscle cells can be differentiated into uh, either myofibroblasts or these so-called synthetic smooth muscle cells. However, we think that stem cells also play an impo important role. And uh, these stem cells, we have shown the, uh, the evidence they can differentiate into all these lineages related to the uh, vascular disease. The stem cell can differentiate into adipogenic cells, uh, cartilage cells, and bone cells, and it can result in calcification in the vessel wall. And uh, here I want to show you an evidence of this, uh, how these uh, SOX stem cells can contribute to vascular remodeling in response to injury. So this is an ex vivo model. You can take a lineage tracing mouse, and in this case, the SOX10 positive cells are, are labeled in the red color. And here you can see this uh, green color is actually the background of the uh, matrix. So uh, at day three, after uh, injury, you can just see a couple uh, SOX10 positive cells, but after uh, uh, one more day, you can see that cell proliferation, cell migration, actually there's also uh, a emergence of some uh, previously negative cells, and they become positive for SOX10. And these cells can contribute to the vascular remodeling uh, in response to injury. We also perform the injury model in, in the mouse. And in this case, the SOX10 positive cells are labeled by uh, LACV. And here you can see uh, in a normal femoral artery, actually the uh, whole vessel is negative for SOX10. But after injury, you can see a big segment positive for SOX10. And if you take a close look at the uh, cross section, and here, uh, you can see here, actually, a majority of the cells in this part are positive, uh, are derived from SOX10 po uh, positive cells. So uh, in all of the cells, actually, here, are positive or alpha active. So that suggests that these uh, proliferative and synthetic smooth muscle cells actually uh, can be uh, derived from multiple sources. Uh, in addition to smooth muscle cells, the vascular stem cells also play an important role. So is there any significance in, uh, for uh, real uh, atherosclerosis uh, development in human. We collected a lot of human samples um, uh, of this uh, vascular disease. And here's just one example showing that, uh, indeed, uh, if you look into the uh, atherosclerotic lesion, we can isolate these uh, cells uh, positive for, for SOX10. You can see these are in vitro study. And this is the in vivo staining and showing some uh, SOX10 positive cells here. And if you perform double staining or even triple staining, we did show that uh, uh, these SOX10 positive cells in human atherosclerotic lesion can differentiate into uh, uh, cartilage uh, cells, bone cells, and, and even fat cells. So now I want to uh, uh, extend our uh, uh, discussion to a uh, uh, microvessel. So by doing uh, lineage tracing, we found these SOX10 positive cells actually contribute to the microvessel formation throughout the body. In many different organs, if you uh, look into uh, this developmental process, you, you perform the staining, you can see uh, all of these uh, uh, microvessels in different organs have these uh, endothelial cells, and then outside you have a parasite-like structure. Actually, many are derived from uh, SOX10 positive cells. And then we perform this uh, hind limb ischemic model uh, and see whether uh, these SOX10 positive cells can contribute to the microvessel formation, for example, arterial. And what we found is in the, in the newly uh, uh, regenerated tissue, you can see endothelial cells in, in um, some of these uh, areas. And then uh, the, uh, with lineage tracing, we can see the SOX10 party cells also contribute to a micro uh, vessel formation. We could also isolate the SOX10 party cells from uh, the subcutaneous tissue. In this case, it's a GLP rats. And then we transplant these cells into this uh, skin flow chamber. Uh, people use that for cancer uh, uh, growth study, and also actually in that show this uh, for cardiomyocyte study. What we found is in this uh, microvessel uh, 
uh, form under the, uh, under, uh, under the skin, you have this endothelial cell layer, and also you also see some of these uh, stock party cells contribute uh, to the stabilization of these microvessels. So now I want to talk about uh, how stem cells could participate in the um, uh, vascular regeneration. So uh, about a decade ago, we developed these uh, uh, non-degradable biopolymers, and we have uh, used that for the first uh, in-man studies to show that this could be used for the uh, dialysis uh, AV graphs. And this nanofibro scaffold has some advantage. Of course, it allows the cell infiltration uh, and um, integration into the tissue. In addition, this allows the early access uh, of, with the needle uh, to, to uh, get into this uh, vessel wall. And one advantage if you compare to existing graph, and here we show that if you uh, take out this uh, needle, and this nanofibro scaffold can self-heal and stop bleeding, which can prevent uh, uh, thrombus formation and uh, potentially clogging in the vessel. And then we move on to uh, use biodegradable polymer to make a, a vascular graph. And this is just a, a, a widely used electro spinning process. And we can manipulate the process to make this uh, scaffold similar to the native uh, artery structure. We could also uh, engineer the alignment of these fibers on the luminal surface in the outer layer uh, to simulate the structure in native artery. And many, years ago, many years ago, we did a study by seeding the bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells into the vascular wall and uh, investigate how this could help the vascular remodeling. And interestingly, what we found is that uh, if you do not seed a uh, mesenchymal stem cell into this vascular graph, you have a, a, a thick intima uh, formation here. And of course, you have endothelial cells and also a lot of smooth muscle cells. In addition, you can uh, observe a lot of collagen and uh, elastin deposition. However, with mesenchymal stem cell seeding, you have uh, a much higher patency and less uh, new intima formation. You see this uh, well-organized smooth muscle layer under the endothelial cells, and you also have a, a collagen formation and elastin uh, uh, layer under the endothelial cells. So one interesting observation is that uh, after uh, one to two weeks, most of these human bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells disappear from this uh, 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 graph. And all of these cells you have observed here after one month are basically, basically derived from the rat host tissues. So we asked the question, if we, can we harness the regeneration potential of the endogenous cells and rege regenerate blood vessel instead of using the uh, uh, vessel uh, seeded with uh, 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 the also, uh, other sources of the stem cells? So we uh, switched uh, from this kind of uh, uh, in vitro tissue engineering approach by uh, seeding cells on the scaffold uh, to an uh, in situ tissue engineering approach. In this case, what we're trying to do is make bioactive vascular graph. In this case, we can recruit uh, endogenous cells for tissue regeneration. So we did a lot of work in, uh, of course, the first uh, uh, important um, manipulation is to make sure this vascular graph is non-thrombogenic because you do not have endothelial cell seeding. And we did a lot of uh, modification by uh, immobilizing various kind of biomolecules, for example, even mucin, which is a molecule in, in cartilage in, in, in saliva, which has a lot of these uh, uh, side chain uh, as a, a sugar molecule, can uh, block platelet adhesion. We also try other anti-thrombogenic approach. And here I just want to show you briefly an example of using heparin because it's highly negatively charged, not have this uh, uh, indirect uh, inhibition of thrombus formation, but also can serve as a, a molecule for the immobilization of uh, many cytokines and growth factors that have a heparin binding domain. So our approach is to um, um, modify the uh, uh, graph, and then we can recruit, hopefully, endothelial cell uh, progenitors from circulation, and also the smooth muscle cell progenitors from the surrounding tissues so that we can remodel both the uh, lumen surface and also the wall. And here shows some example. It is interesting that uh, you can compare three groups. This is uh, uh, without coating, the graph, polymer graph. And then you have heparin coating and heparin plus a stromal derived factor one. We have tried various factors, for example, VEGF, and we found that SDF has a, a very potent effect to recruit uh, progenitor cells. In, I want, just want to show the data here. So it's interesting, heparin can improve the short-term patency, but with time, you still uh, lose some of the, uh, uh, the animals. 
And with SDF1, it not only uh, can help promote the early uh, patency, but also for long-term patency, you can see a, a much higher uh, successful, successful rate. So what is the mechanism? <laughs> By doing a, a time-lab study of uh, um, endothelial cell uh, histology, and you can see here, uh, these are on bar staining. You can see, I uh, just focus on the uh, middle part of the graph because at two ends, you do have migration of endothelial cells from the adjacent vessels near the anastomotic sites. So here you can see that with SDF1, you can uh, have uh, some more endothelialization. This is uh, after, uh, after two weeks. And many of these cells are positive for both CD34 and CD4, suggesting some of the endothelial progenitors may contribute to endothelial uh, cellization in this area. In addition, for the vascular warrior modeling, and you can see at early stage, you have a lot of cells recruited to the uh, outer layer of the graph, and, but these cells are negative for smooth muscle cell markers. And with time, you can see the expression of smooth muscle markers, for example, Caponi-1 and myosin-heavy chain. So suggesting this process is uh, uh, similar to the development, instead of recruiting mature cells, actually what we recruit in uh, uh, already endogenous cells could be the progenitor cells that can uh, gradually differentiate into uh, smooth muscle cells. Indeed, if we isolate cells uh, from this uh, one-week sample, and when we uh, put them into culture, we can see these cells are positive for those uh, stem cell markers, and they can differentiate into smooth muscle cells in vitro if you uh, give them the uh, growth, uh, growth factors, for example, TGA beta, and also induce the notch signaling. So in addition to these uh, polymer graphs, by the group of poly polymer graphs, we also try this uh, uh, decelerized matrix, and we in and indeed show that we could have enough mechanical strength of the decelerized fibro uh, fibrotic conduit. In this case, we implant a mandrel under the skin of the uh, animals, and they can form fibrotic tissues within a couple of weeks. And then we could uh, decelerize them, and, and we show that uh, with all of these surface modification, we can achieve endothelialization, and also uh, completely remodeling in the vascular wall. So with that, I want to conclude and show that uh, the vascular stem cell, indeed, it can contribute to the disease development in the uh, uh, um, in, in animal model and also in, in human. And in addition, the uh, SOX10 stem, uh, positive stem cells uh, play an important role in microvessel formation. And finally, we could uh, develop a strategy to uh, engineer the next generation of vascular graphs that can recruit the stem cells for the regeneration of the tissue. And I also want to thank all the uh, former students and, and current students who uh, contribute to this project, uh, named uh, in, in red color, you know, collaborator for this project, uh, Randall Lee at UCSF. Thank you. Great. We have time for just one quick question. Yes. Sure. Yeah. in uh, uh, inc increasing the uh, heparin-1 anticoagulation effect. So what's the potential mechanism about uh, SDF-1 in promoting heparin anticoagulation activity? Um, actually, uh, for SDF-1, the, the, the goal is to uh, recruit uh, endogenous uh, stem cells. This is one of the most potent uh, chemokines for stem cell recruitment. It's uh, very abundant in bone marrow that helps the homing of these uh, uh, hematopoietic stem cells and also some EPCs. So SDF1 is a, a peptide with about 60 amino acids, and interestingly, it has a binding domain uh, with uh, heparin. So we, we basically just uh, use that binding domain to immobilize SDF1 on the graft surface. It will be released uh, slowly uh, from the, the graft and help recruit the cells from circulating blood and surrounding tissue. Okay, last question. Debbie? Yeah, thanks yes. for working with all the presentation. I just have a very quick question regarding your uh, SOX 10 cells. Uh, are those cells also SCAR1 positive? Because in atherosclerotic lesions, we found mm -hmm. a lot of SCAR1 positive cells in the area where calcification is located. Yeah, so SCAR1 positive, SCAR1 is a marker for mouse cells in, in human, it's, it's not present. Uh, we did some double staining uh, SCAR1 C kit in SOX10. Uh, we didn't see uh, much overlap between the SCAR1 and the SOX10 positive cells populations. Great. 
Thank you. So we, we are a little behind the schedule, so we're going to have just a 10-minute break.